back at the very end of 2020, I did a video on what I called the flow explosion. I talked about how vendors like AWS, Airtable, Appian, Asana, Bizarji, Boomi, Camunda, Firestart, Flowable, Google, IBM, uh, Microsoft, MuleSoft, Oracle, Pegasystems, Room, Salesforce, SAP, ServiceNow, SnapLogic, TrackVia, Tibco, Zapier, and Zoho, and more are all talking about flow. Many of them are talking about workflow, but that in reality, uh, they're all doing quite different things. Every month, it seems that um, we come across a new vendor. Just the other day, it was Tonkeen, uh, which uh, just announced a $50 million Series B funding round to address business automation use cases with a no-code approach. And in my last video, I showed this chart to illustrate how, in reality, there are multiple segments to the overall space that is covered by tools that are based around flow in some sense. Now the vertical dimension shows two types of approaches and focus. In the upper half, we've got tools that are designed around the needs and interests of specialist developers. And they typically emphasize flexibility and extensibility and promote their ability to tackle really quite complicated use cases. And in the lower half, we've got tools that are designed more around the interests of generalists. And they're more focused on helping them deliver results quickly and with as little effort as possible. They're more likely to be best aligned to relatively straightforward use cases. The horizontal dimension is more about how tools focus on particular mixes of actors that are ultimately involved in flows. On the left, we've got tools that primarily use flow to connect systems together and drive automated data flows or synchronized actions. In the center, we've got tools that focus more on the flow of work between people but that also make it easy to connect flows to enterprise apps and data. And on the right, we have tools that are primarily focused just on coordinating work between people and teams. Now, when I uh, recorded the last video on this topic, I didn't show vendor names on the chart, but I'm gonna show you a, a boatload of names uh, now. But before I flash this up, please be aware of two things. This is the disclaimer. First, this is absolutely not complete. I'm sure there are vendors missing, but I would love to hear about those if you want to share. Secondly, this is not a formal IDC assessment. I haven't done any kind of comparative or in-depth analysis on these vendors and the positioning of the names, particularly within each box, uh, should not be given any weight whatsoever. This isn't one of those exercises where the top right is best. So here it is. Now, Personally, I found it really useful to create this to help myself keep a record of different vendors and different types of vendors uh, now introducing flow concepts into their tools. You might ask, why is this happening? Why are all these vendors talking about flow? Uh, and I don't really have a definitive answer for you, but I suspect it's that when, you're, um, when you set out to design tools to help people build software, but you want to avoid people having to write code, then actually a great way to enable people to specify logic and behavior, what, the, what you want the app to actually do is actually by describing a flow. I'm old enough to remember uh, flow chart templates, the plastic uh, templates you used to draw on paper with to draw out flow charts to help you describe uh, system logic. Boxes and lines can get you a long way. Now, I'd love to know what you think about this. What's missing? Is it helpful? Are there other vendors you think should go on here or vendors you think should be in different boxes? I'd love to know. Thanks very much for watching. As always, if you like this, please share and subscribe and so on and take care and I will see you soon.